Darwin was about six feet tall, about as tall as I am. He was thin. I mean, even when he was in his 50s, he only weighed perhaps 11 stone, 160 pounds, something like that. Um, he had a high tenor voice, and when he laughed, they said it was like peals of bells. James Moore schreef samen met Adrian Desmond een biografie over evolutiebioloog Charles Darwin. Wat voor een man was hij en hoe kon hij zijn evolutietheorie ontwikkelen in de kritische en gelovige maatschappij van de 19e eeuw? Darwin, de biografie, geeft antwoord op deze vragen en brengt nieuwe inzichten over een van de belangrijkste wetenschappers uit de geschiedenis. One needs, I think, to understand the sort of man he was in the age of the 19th century to appreciate the kind of science he did. It's not sufficient to understand biology as it's practiced today to understand Darwin. In many ways, that's a barrier. One has to get personal with what people in Darwin's day considered to be important and what was not acceptable science, which is what he did, as well as acceptable science. A person who took up evolution was threatening the citadel itself, as Darwin called it, the human brain, the human soul, and with that man's destiny, whether in heaven or in hell. To say that morals were a product of evolution, that man was a product of evolution, and therefore implicitly that religion might be a product of evolution, ran slap counter to the established science of his day. It was socially disruptive. Above all, he was unwell for most of his working life from around 1840 until the 1870s. And he was afflicted with excruciating ailments from eczema, which you could see, to digestive complications, which you could only hear and smell. And uh, therefore, he was a difficult person to be around. And you know, those problems he had with his digestion were closely correlated with the stresses of his work on evolution. And when he really ceased writing about evolutionary theory, his health miraculously improved. We suggest in one or two places that it took a special kind of person. Once we suggest that it took a person who had seen wild people, as Darwin called them, native Fuegians at the southern tip of South America. He saw how different people could be, different races of people, different stages, of, as Darwin saw it, of civilization. And he wondered, could the same God have created us so high and so low, so savage and so civilized? Why did those people go to live there? There was a problem about human nature, and it took a person with that problem in his mind, we think, to risk everything for a solution. Darwin's stresses about doubting had to do with being doubted once he launched his theory. It wasn't just a threat to carry this burden of belief in evolution by natural selection and worry about what people would say if they found out that he accepted something like that. He was also worried, once he had put his cards on the table, whether people would be convinced. It's one of the reasons why he went to great lengths to research every aspect of every criticism that he could possibly think of that people might level against his work. And as a result, his work got bigger and bigger and bigger. Eventually, he was, was going to publish two or three fat volumes called Natural Selection, his theory. Darwin didn't publish those volumes, thank God, because Alfred Russell Wallace sent him a paper that made him leave the closet, uh, evolutionary closet, and, and, and write a book that people could digest, The Origin of Species, in 500 pages.